Um, I was, a, as a student, I was a squatter, um, and then I uh, became a neighborhood activist, um, and then I started to do social housing, uh, and as a social housing architect in Holland, you start to do neighborhoods, uh, because the projects are large-scale, and then I ended up uh, doing uh, large-scale urban designs, and the combination of that is uh, the Hafen city in Hamburg on the left. Um, and um, last year, the uh, Olympic legacy, not for London, but for Hamburg, um, which was the first comprehensive uh, urban design um, act to jump across the city of the Elbe to the south, um, and which was exited by a referendum. Um, in the wake of uh, doing many of these, um, sorry, yes, in the wake of many doing of many of these projects, uh, we dis we started to do a research on uh, um, what we call grand projet in the tradition of uh, Pompidou and his Paris concept, and um, we collected uh, 26 projects worldwide in 15 countries and 23 cities, and um, uh, researched them superficially then cook them down to uh, around eight. So here you see top left, La Défense. Uh, in the middle you see um, King's Cross. On the right hand you see Hafen City. Uh, down left um, you see, um, what the hell do you see there? Um, um, <laughs> Tokyo Maranucci. <laughs> um, in the middle you see the beginning of Marina Bay in Singapore. And on the, um, the right hand side you see uh, Lu Ya Zoye in Pudong Island in Shanghai. Um, we do not only look at these projects uh, as uh, isolated um, things, but for instance here you see uh, in King's Cross we look at uh, how these projects are part of a, a constellation of centralities that can be read as an orientation network across the city of London and their relation uh, in between. Um, there's a tradition in these projects. One is, uh, for instance, Canary Wharf, which is more or less uh, from the same uh, period as La Défense, and these are uh, hardcore monofunctional um, aircraft carriers that have been landed uh, from the sky uh, ruthlessly onto the city. And that's, that's why we call these projects uh, wolves. They are mostly uh, uh, privately owned and they are uh, very strongly uh, gated um, and have a strong uh, uh, control um, all over. Um, skyscrapers that have two large floor plates that are not flexible. Um, etc. But you see also in this picture that uh, Canary Wharf is not only um, uh, a wolf, it turns to be gradually a sheep, because the interesting thing about these bad projects is that over time they attract housing, they attract transport, they attract connectivity, and then gradually they start indeed at the end networking into the city. Um, Today, we know that, so there's a kind of evolution. So if you look at Hafen City, it is based on uh, extreme networking. It is based on uh, giving small plots away to developers. It is based on the incremental uh, development, um, piece by piece, and of diversity in program architecture, grade level, uh, and so on and so on. Um, if you look at uh, La Défense, uh, you see the same. You see that uh, La Défense uh, was landed, like Canary Wharf, but it created, in the end, the centrality, and the centrality attracted a whole kind of uh, urban district around it, which uh, kind of organizes itself as fungus around it. And um, you see that even on the right-hand side, La Défense starts to uh, chin Chineseify itself uh, gradually, which is uh, the next uh, and maybe the final uh, thesis um, um, if you look, go to Pudong Island in Shanghai, which is uh, partly uh, co-designed by the EPADESA, the uh, designers of La Défense, um, you see uh, this um, 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 compound of uh, large skyscrapers that are uh, set into a field with no public space. They have no uh, uh, real um, connectivity in terms of <coughs> permeability. There's no internal and external um, integration, and they don't, don't talk to each other, and the, neighborhood itself doesn't talk to the surroundings. It's interesting to see a comparison between uh, Pudong Island and uh, Wall Street, where you see what an in, in immense uh, differentiation, uh, difference in uh, public space, street pattern, and fineness uh, of uh, connectivity Wall Street shows against this Pudong Island, in, um, more or less with the same density. And on the right-hand side, a drawing by Peter Rowe, 
that uh, shows this uh, famous diagonal that runs into the middle of nowhere um, as a kind of copy of uh, the Champs-Élysées from uh, La Défense. Last project I will show you is the, uh, and, and also then um, show that um, there is also an evolution in Asia in terms of uh, mega projects being, becoming more human, is Marina Bay, which is a successive uh, large-scale development that seems uh, not to end uh, at all. The first one is Marina Square, which you see here in the front, and it's a kind of, uh, uh, it was meant like a kind of uh, Florentine Italian nolly system of uh, public spaces. They are all covered underground and overground, as you see. Um, conceived by Hong Kong developers and designed by American architects uh, like Philip Johnson and Roch and Dinklow. Um, so it's a kind of uh, enormous caricature that has been built there, quite successful on a landfill. Um, and is uh, the house, the home of the uh, Formula, Formula One uh, racing um, track activities uh, that are uh, every now and then in Singapore. And by chance, they are held on the same day as the, as the International Bicycle Day, ironically, which the government of Singapore finds a little bit awkward. Um, here you see, this is a kind of symbolic picture because the director of the Hafen City in Hamburg is standing here uh, praying in front of uh, the model of Singapore where all this, uh, these fantastic goodies um, are being produced successively over the um, decades. And um, what uh, um, we work there with our uh, research lab around five, seven years now, and uh, we, will, we have gradually a kind of influence on the way that the town planners think about uh, the city. So this first Florin Florentine project, um, you could say, uh, was a very... Uh, initial thing. The second phase is uh, a couple of skyscrapers that you see here <coughs> that still have the problem that they have enormous uh, floor plates and uh, one block, one plot, um, one building, so no diversity, um, only internally directed. Um, but gradually we, we have been uh, able to, to manage to discuss um, uh, smaller plots with the example of uh, New York, where real estate can also get a lot of uh, value, even with small blocks. And we give them little boxes of cardboard, like you see here, uh, with uh, zoning laws in which they can play and see how, the, how they can uh, really create a, a little bit more diversity within the development of that. And last but not least, this is Marina Bay South. That's a revolutionary change in which uh, perimeter block uh, uh, developments are being uh, combined with towers and semi-public and public spaces that are transitional, like you see here in uh, official diagrams of uh, the center of uh, livable cities, which is uh, one of the main um, drivers of these kind of developments uh, in Singapore, which has a great spin-off in other Asian cities. You shouldn't um, underestimate the effect that it has in, uh, in, in, in Saigon, Jakarta, etc., what these people do. Um, and it is not uh, a surprise that uh, these, the images that they produce are very strongly related to the European um, tradition. I, I talked uh, two days ago to uh, Liu Tai Ker, the big uh, uh, maker of Singapore, and he said, yeah, actually, we were all only aspired by the European city. Um, the last development that uh, is now going to be done, which you see here from the Marina Bay Sands Hotel, is the container term terminal in the, in the back. And this container terminal um, is an enormous piece uh, which uh, is going to be an extension of the CBD. Um, this is the size of it. It's about uh, uh, one and a half times the size of uh, half a city. And um, what is uh, very interesting is that uh, Gradually, the society is uh, uh, geared towards uh, that there's going not to be a made a master plan, but there is first um, uh, a community created. Uh, this community we are also um, co-creating. Um, and this community is, uh, is going to stakeholder um, uh, the master plan together. And there will be different um, scenarios with all kinds of uh, new um, insights um, of urban development, um, like um, high, uh, what does high density uh, um, mixed use really mean, um, to also tackle the myths that, uh, that all these concepts have, um, with a lot of cat categories that are also including uh, economic, sociologic, and psycholo psychological, 
uh, research, energy systems, uh, um, information technology, mobility and transport planning, of course, there's a big dif discussion about li light urbanism, etc. Now, Singapore, um, of course, uh, is, has a bad name. Uh, maybe that's also right. Um, you can compare it a little bit with the West Berlin. Uh, it even have, has less uh, border controls than uh, West Berlin um, in, in its age, but actually it is a large uh, conurbation of uh, over 10 million people. And um, what is, of course, uh, very ironic is you cannot discuss uh, that this is a, a, a large uh, conurbation. You can only co talk within the walls. I have to stop now. I see. Thank you very much. Thanks, Case. I, I wanted to try and tie what, how you introduced yourself as somebody who used to be, who's grown out of being an architect, an ex-architect, back to the point that was the subject of the session before lunch, which was really, as I understood it, a discussion about the limits of architecture and or the limits of design. And um, I'm very struck in your presentation and I'm delighted that urban design has expanded and grown as a profession in the way that it has. And I think there's no question that we have much better cities because of it, not least because architects are very bad at the spaces beyond the building. But my question to you, and perhaps you don't have an answer and we can pick up on it later on, is what are the limits professionally of the urban designer. In particular, what I'm thinking about is when you're designing beyond just the big project, when you're designing the whole city, or perhaps more importantly, what I was really thinking about is about the system of cities. Where do you put multiple big projects? Which is an issue in the parts of the world where you are building at scale, much less than it is when you're building in established cities where you've only got a little bit of room to maneuver. But when you're thinking about the west coast of Africa, we are going to be doing a lot of building, a lot of mega projects. Do you need special design skills to engage with a different kind of person who will make the political decisions about that. It's not the same kind of banker, it's not the same scale of politician. And just as you were talking, and I was thinking, well, how would you even represent that? Does, are there limits to design when we think about the system of cities, is my question. You know, an architect sees the completion of his design uh, within the taste of his own uh, aesthetics um, after it has been completed. Um, the urban designer is the coordinator of everybody's bad taste um, and usually does not survive his project. Um, he is a cogwheel in a machine uh, and has to very carefully uh, conquer his position. Um, but what is the crux is, I, I do hardly know people who are well, who are doing very good urban designs uh, which of course have to be open and incremental and adaptive and so on, um, who have not been an architect or uh, a landscape architect or something um, related. So you have to be a designer to, in order to, uh, to be uh, uh, proactive in creating uh, robust public space systems um, in, uh, in an urban context and a kind of interpretation of the local context. You are a coordinator also um, of politics, uh, designers, um, implementation people, um, population, and, um, and engineers. Uh, you are uh, on, the, on the kind of uh, hinge point between, um, um, between um, I lost it. I have a little bit of a jet lag, sorry. Um, Yes, b between uh, design and science. So let's say what is extremely important, what is not so very uh, developed in my experience with architects is that there's a very important component of, uh, let's say, uh, science on level of transportation and uh, economics, etc., needs to feed in uh, um, your work as an urban designer. Someone come back to that, and, and, and I know Andy's got a, a question on this, but it does seem to me we need to think about this both from the perspective of the person implementing the mega project, but also from the perspective of the person writing the specs or the terms of reference 
for these very large scale interventions at the urban scale. So when you have, whether it's the Minister of a Human Settlements Department or the Treasury, and she commissions work from urban designers, what is she expecting? And do we need a special language to begin to train people so that they ask for the right kinds of things uh, and that we brief people correctly? But let's hand over. So that you um, recover a bit from jet lag and just say to think about this, and we'll come back to this in the discussion, which is the, the city that you, the cities, the 26 or so that you've studied of the kind of mega projects, the contrast between the presentation of those and this morning's different, you know, the sort of uh, alternatives from below. Um, and I'm very curious, because you've, you've worked in so many different environments, is what's the connection between these two? In some ways, many of these cities, these global centers, more relate to one another than they even do to their surrounding context or the communities, the city of refugees we saw this morning or in Lagos. And I'm very curious, what, not only is one the relationship, but what does one learn? What is the connection between these two things as an urban designer working on very large contexts that these aren't? islands unto themselves, but actually how they address the fundamentals of what's happening in urbanization in many of these countries. Yeah, I think um, if you talk about uh, our mega projects, um, they happen, um, and if you want it or not. And uh, you have to decide as a, as a designer or an architect or an urban designer, do you want to have influence um, uh, or not? Uh, my decision to focus uh, primarily on urban design was that I discovered that architects are ignored uh, by uh, large-scale urbanization and by politics. And that I think that the, the, the discipline of architecture and design needs to have uh, influence uh, on large-scale urbanization. That's the first thing. The second thing is that um, urban mega projects are always complementary to slums and other things. They are economically, economically in a certain uh, dynamic balance, if, if you like or not. And they are centralities. Um, in a system in which conurbations uh, are either concentrated but sometimes also much more spread out. Uh, the, 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 the myth that 60% of the people lives in cities is not true. At least half of these people lives in Desakota areas that are spread out um, uh, along the Ganges or in uh, Shanghai and so on. And so um, urban mega projects or, or centralities, if you like, I don't like the word urban mega projects at all, um, but working on centralities as nodes of, uh, of um, uh, encounter uh, on all levels, economic, culture, uh, etc., is very important. If you don't interfere, it will be done by, uh, by developers and uh, politicians that want to kind of stamp uh, their, uh, their life onto the city. And I think uh, that is a lost chance if you don't do that.